When I was a kid, there was a store in downtown Toronto, and I'm always going to remember the neon signs on top. And this weekend, I've been thinking it might actually be a good nickname for one of our favorite climbers. Do any of you Toronto people remember Sam the Record Man? The Wujang Lead and Speed World Cup is over, and... Let's be honest, speed made all the headlines this time around, especially here in North America, because the speed world record has come home to the USA. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a throwback if you want to go back to the early 90s when Hans Florin technically won the first ever speed world championships. So maybe that's a little too much of a reach. But for the first time since this homologated wall has been introduced, an American now holds that men's speed world record. It is Sam Watson. The very first day of things in qualifications, both of his runs on lane A and lane B starts out with a 4.859 and then just a few minutes later comes out and lands a 4.798. Pretty much the headline of the comp came on the very first day. Congratulations, Sam, on an incredible start. Now, even though he's keeping up the fast times all through finals, it wasn't enough for the win. It was Peng Wu from China, who also was putting up remarkable times, just not enough to be a world record. Peng Wu comes first. Second place is Sam Watson. Kira Malkadamin is in third place. For the women... Not too much happened in the qualifiers in terms of fast speeds, but Emma Hunt did land the first seed, so she was the favorite going into the bracket of 16. Unfortunately, she had kind of like two falls in the very first run, and so that number one seed was left empty. And of course, who comes up to take that gold medal? Of course, it's Alexandra Miroslaw in first place. She also set the best time of the day. In second place was Natalia Kaluczka, also from Poland. And in third place, Jimin Jong from Korea, her first ever IFSC medal. Congratulations to Jimin. All of these climbers are going to be going into Salt Lake City looking to improve. I'm not quite sure if they're going to be setting better times. As Lucas Knapp said while he was doing the co-commentary, when he was asked by uh, Matt Groom if this was a good wall or a bad wall, he said, oh, this is a good wall. If you ask me, I think this is the best wall on the circuit. Hold-wise, grip-wise, this is the wall to set records and personal bests on. And so it was. We got new world records in the men's, a new Asian record from Peng Wu, I think in, was it semifinals? And of course, a few of the women setting personal bests as well. So in Salt Lake City, not quite sure if we'll see those records extended, but I'm sure Sam Watson will be aiming to at least get a medal in front of his home crowd, which he hasn't managed to do before. Speaking of Salt Lake City, the Canadian paraclimbing team is trying to go to Salt Lake for the Paraclimbing World Cup coming up in May. If you are interested in supporting the Canadian paraclimbing team, there's a link in the description where you can pay 10 or 20 bucks into a 50-50 draw to help support these climbers. Money goes straight to the climbers, not through anybody else. So you can drop your support at the link in the description. On the lead side, the story for both men and women in semifinals was cruxy midsections, whether they were dramatic traverses or just hard clutch moves where the feet don't quite make sense. We lost about a lot of big names to get into the finals. Most notably, if you want to watch a good reaction, probably the best reaction of the weekend, even better than Sam Watson's records, was probably Colin Duffy falling at the low crux on the men's semifinal. So that meant, along with a bunch of the big names, again, not being at this competition, a slightly weaker field than we would hope for. There was no Andra, there was no Magos, there was no Jakob Schubert, right? There was no Jesse Pills, there was no I Mori. These are headline names, right? Um, that meant going into finals, we had kind of a, a, a shifty finals, but the climbs were hard through the entire competition, which even if you don't get all the names, that's a really important part to help determine who is actually the best, even if we feel like things are a little bit watered down, right? At the end of the day, who else but Yanni Garnbrett taking the win and the only one to top all four routes on the women's side through the entire weekend. In second place, bumping up her uh, her best results in the lead uh, was Jilu Lo from China, and in third place was Chen So of Korea. For the boys, first place ended up being Toby Roberts. Uh, he was leading out of qualifiers uh, and uh, leading out of semifinals. It all came together in the final when Serato and Raku took a couple moves towards the end, a little bit too casual. Taisei Homa actually tied with Toby Roberts in the final, but due to count back from semifinals, Toby Roberts ends up with the gold. Taisei Homa in, third pl in second place and third place Serato and Raku. Now, a couple notes about the comp before I let you go. First of all, with the speed record, this... This comp had me just thinking back to like five years ago, before the Olympics, before the pandemic. Uh, 
we had a discussion on the debrief after we heard some news about what might happen to the speed route. Listen to this clip. A couple months ago, there was a round table at Innsbruck, I think, where they had, uh, what's her name, Silvia Vertolini and a few other representatives of the IFSC and industry people talking about where like the future of sport climbing was going. And one point that came up was how speed climbing is very likely going to be on a four year rotation for the route where the route could change after every Olympic Games. That's a ter terrible idea, changing the speed course, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. I mean, think about it like in track and field, you know, you don't every few years say, OK, now we're going to change it to the 210 meter dash. Can you imagine if we had come out of the Tokyo Olympics and had to switch over to another route? We wouldn't have gotten to enjoy the world records that were set in 2021, 2022, 23, and now 2024. For some reason, since the Olympics came into play, we've seen a glut of records broken every single season on the men's and the women's side. Before the Olympics, it was something where you were kind of kind of lucky if you got a new record uh, you know, once a year. And of course, before the Olympics, especially if you go back towards the start of this route around, you know, 2007 ish, it was common, not not most likely, but common that you would do a speed competition on the wall that wasn't technically set up for a world record. So it didn't meet the tight standards for setting a world record on, even though the holds were the same and the wall angle was probably pretty close and the height was probably 15 meters ish. Uh, it didn't quite make the cut. And that meant for a bunch of speed World Cups, you might see some fast times, but technically the wall didn't meet the criteria to certify a world record. Thinking back to those days when those world records were so rare and now seeing what we have today after the influx of not just Olympic money, but mostly Olympic ambition. Speed climbing didn't used to get as much attention as it does now. And now a lot of federal governments are incentivizing speed athletes with maybe money or fame uh, or, you know, future jobs or, or just prospects in life. Now the Olympics has given speed climbing an extra boost and we've seen the development and how serious athletes and coaches take it. And we're seeing the results now. It's an incredible thing to watch. And I'm so happy that we get to see it on this route, this damaged janky route that was maybe not expected to amount to very much. It was set with holds that you know, Jackie Godoff probably just had given to him. He probably didn't have a choice of what holds to use. As we all know, right from the get-go, it had that one handhold up at the top that's off to the side that no one ever used. And it even had the foothold that, you know, got turned the wrong way in the topo. So you could use it as a jug. And even though that wasn't intentional, it got drawn into the map. And then for, you know, the 15 years since then, people have been living with those same problems, but we made something incredible and beautiful out of it. It's become a symbol of this entire sport. Um, and I'm so happy that we didn't change it, at least in Tokyo, and I hope we don't change it after Paris. I think it would mean something to the speed climbing community to at least get to 2027, the 20 year birthday of this speed route officially since it was debuted at the 2007 World Championships. And use that time to reflect on what we like about this route, what we don't, and if we do want to change eventually, if the world records slow down and we don't see that much improvement anymore, maybe we can kind of talk about what we hope to preserve and what we hope to improve upon on the next route. But boy, oh boy, am I happy that we haven't switched out this route yet. And hey, we did a graph last week. Why not do a graph this week? Last week, we talked about Yanya's gold medal count in Boulder and how it compared to the all-time greats. This time around, let's look at the lead discipline. With her win in Wujang, Yanni Garmbrett has tied Angie Eiter's total of 29 gold medals in the lead World Cups or lead World Championships, meaning she's now tied in second behind Jane Kim with 30 gold medals, the all-time record holder for lead gold medals. Now, that means that Yanni Garmbrett could overtake Jane Kim in this season, but what's unique about this particular count is that the record she's trying to beat is actually held by somebody that's still competing, still making it to semifinals and still making it to finals. So it's not just about, okay, what can Yanya win? Jane Kim might actually be able to push that record a little higher and keep it out of reach the way she did in Chamonix last year when she became the oldest woman to ever win a World Cup gold medal. I don't know what's going to happen. My guess is Yanni is probably going to overtake Jane Kim in her mom era, right? I think Yanni Garmbrecht is going to take this either this season or next, and we will have a new all-time record holder for lead gold medals in World Cups and World Championships. 
To wrap things up, let's take a look at the current standings in the Speed and Lead World Cup rankings for 2024. In the speed women, Alexandra Miroslav of Poland's in first with countrywoman Natalia Kaluczka right behind her in second. Jimin Zhang of Korea in third, Alexandra Kaluczka in fourth, and Li Juandang from China in fifth. Xiao Chin Zhang is in sixth, Shen Yen Wang is in seventh, and Julia Randi from Italy is in eighth place. Emma Hunt from the USA is in ninth, and rounding it out in tenth is Rajia Salsabilla. On the men's side for speed, Peng Wu in first, Sam Watson in second, Kira Malkadamin in third. Fourth place, Ludovico Fasali with countryman Matteo Zerloni behind him in fifth. Jinshan Wang in sixth, Vedric Leonardo in seventh, and Rishat Kaibulin in eighth, and of course Long Kao and Liang Zhang in ninth and tenth. On the lead side, who else but Yanya Garnbret in first place? Jilu Lo in second and Cheyenne Su in third. Natsuki Tani in fourth. Aaron McNeese, upstart from Great Britain, in fifth. Laura Ragura in sixth. Natsumi Oda, another rookie, in seventh. Mia Crample in eighth. Menon Hilly, ninth and tenth. Futaba Ito. For the boys, it's Toby Roberts in first place for now. Number two is Taisei Homa, and number three is Serato and Raku. In fourth, Zento Murashita. Fifth, Sasha Lehman. Sixth, Hannes Van Dyson. Seventh from Japan, Shuda Tanaka. Eighth from Great Britain, Max Milne. Ninth, Shion Amata is back. And tenth, bouldering superstar, Tomoa Narasaki. And that's it for Wu Jang. We're looking forward to the Boulder and Speed World Cup in Salt Lake City, finally in a time zone that actually works for me, right? Uh, we're looking forward to that in two weeks. So until then, make sure you've subscribed to this channel for more content. And of course, if you find watching World Cup competitions a little bit lonely, the best beta to fix that is to join the Plastic Weekly Discord in the link down below. And of course, if you want to waste some money, you can also support this channel on Patreon. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.